Lady Joan Garnett and Andrew Holm are two bright aristocrats who are engaged to be married. They've been immersed in all the modern progressive ideas where the only dogma is that there is no dogma. And in their latest adventure, Lady Joan is seeking to gain membership in an organization that prides itself on tolerance of everything. I have been to several meetings at the Liberty Hall Club. They say I may be elected to the club, but they doubt if I'm advanced enough. Advanced? In what direction? Oh, in all directions. Why, that's just the point. You can say anything at the Liberty Hall Club. You can defend any view, anarchist, atheist, or whatever's supposed to be worse. They include all, yes, all opinions in the world. And then they talk. <laughs> it must be rather stimulating for you. Oh, it's frightfully exciting. Do come with me there this evening, won't you? You'll be sure to secure my election, and you'll probably be elected yourself. <laughs> and why would they elect me? Because you are an anarchist. I am? <laughs> And how did you arrive at that conclusion? Because of your complete philosophic scheme of negations. You have looked at nothing from every possible point of view. You have divided nothing into sections and then recombined it into systems. You have distinguished one kind of nothing from another kind of nothing and then proven that the difference amounted to nothing after all. <laughs> Yet you are not a bore which is why I'm so fond of you. You will come with me this evening, won't you? All right. Because I think the sixth sense of all learned literature is bogus. Now you can't say that outside the club. You can only say that inside the club. Oh, this is good. <laughs> Happy to see you again here, my darling. We are proud of this acquisition. Every kind of opinion, you see, as I was saying, every kind of opinion can be expressed in the club. Well, suppose I express the opinion that the police should raid this place. But you don't express that opinion. A man of your known liberal tendencies would never come to the conclusion that the police involvement in order or the state-run affairs is ever the sort of thing that can be condoned by civilized, or dare I say, non-civilized man. <clears throat> I do express that opinion. I think now that everyone now in this room ought to be in jail. <laughs> Why? <clears throat> because... We're not respectable. One must be respectable. Res respectability? Respectability? Well, it's respectability that's created all the persecutions and superstitions and abominations, all the, all the loss of individuality, of progress, of self-ownership and self-respect. Uh, self-respect, true. Uh, and how can one respect anything that is not respectable? That is a quibble, uh, a pun. Don't all these things come to be because love is not free? Well, of course it isn't. Uh, love means that a man, in one respect at least, is not free. What? Well, if a man is truly free, he should be free to bind himself, <laughs> to bind himself to a woman. But would there not be more joy, more old Greek gaiety, if marriage were abolished? Why? The, the Greeks believed in marriage. Oh, do, you, do, you, do you really mean to say, do you dare to say that it is just or, or right that a woman should be tied down to a man, that it's, that it's tolerable, that... That's what I mean to say. But... I think that they should be married in a church. And, of course, uh, before three o'clock. Oh, and, uh, and, uh, and what right have you to say such things? You are the sort that has persecuted everything. What right have you? Where have you got your right? 
Oh, I've got it from you. You expressly told me that any opinion is permitted in this club. So, therefore, I think that an indissoluble church marriage, celebrated in a church before three o'clock... No. As if a mere building or a mere hour can matter. No? Why not? It's all environment. I beg your pardon? It's all environment. You, you uh, think it's uh, all right to be respectable because you've always been respectable. Or you, you believe in, in being married in a church because you've always been to church. <laughs> well, that explains it, I suppose. Uh, but you know, to say it's all environment is decidedly against sound church teaching. Oh. It neglects that degree of self-determination, evidently deducible from the dogma of original sin, as implied in Holy Scripture, and finally defined at the Third Council of Thessalonians. <laughs> Dr. Ross? Dr. Ross? Well? I come to a club where I'm expressly told that any opinion is tolerated, and while I'm expressing an opinion for which thousands have died, a gentleman cuts me short in the middle of a Greek word and turns his back on me. When that happens, there are only two things that can happen. If we are rationalists, you will apologize. If we are savages, or gentlemen, let us go and fight in the backyard. Well, uh, well, well, I'll, well, well, I'll, I'll fight you if we like, but, but really, really. Uh, uh, perhaps it was rather rude of me to, to turn my back, but, but upon my blessed word, I never heard such things in my life. Sound church teaching and an, and an original sin. Uh, I do apologize, Mr. Holm. I, I think you had a right with the rules of the club and all, but, but really, really, there's a limit to this. There is a limit to Liberty Hall. I know now what that limit is. I'm very sorry, of course. Extremely sorry. But I don't think I could make any promises at this time. The vacancies in the club are so few, and some of the members are so very keen on having people who are really advanced that really, that really... That's really we must be going. I've never got such good out of an evening in my life. Come along, Joan. You are an extraordinary person, Andrew. Are you mad? Not now. But those people were all arguing for the things you've always been arguing for. Permit me a masculine distinction. They were arguing badly. <laughs> well, you were pretty wild. <laughs> you don't really believe in all of those things. Respectability and marriage. And all the rest you were defending. You don't believe that a marriage must take place in a church before three. <laughs> well, you don't believe in a church at all. <laughs> and as for a council of the church... <laughs> you have such a pretty <laughs> laugh, Joan. And what do you mean? I don't believe I can say what I mean. I don't believe you can hear it. But I have found the limit of anarchy. Anarchists will endure everything except one thing, sense. They will tolerate a hundred heresies. They will not tolerate orthodoxy. When you see a poor chap standing at the corner, what do you see? The man on the street? Yes, we call him that because he's ordinary. What does he want? He, he wants a, a house, a wife, and a baby. All the humdrum things God dreamed of when he created the world. That's why we put that man to sweep our streets and black our boots, because he wants what God wanted long ago, and not what we shall want the Wednesday after next. Think of him, and then think of all those people at Liberty Hall Club. 
Those foxes have holes and those vultures of the air have nests, but man has nowhere to lay his head. I don't think I understand it. Do you understand this? A man will be married to a woman in a particular stone church before three o'clock. Yes, that I understand easily. Thank you.